had reservations in regards to the arrest and uh, the uh, arraigning in court of the uh, uh, Deputy Chief Justice. Well, uh, uh, Edwin Sifuna, welcome to KTN News. Yesterday you had uh, your reservations. Kindly uh, try to explain to us uh, why these reservations are uh, and why now, uh, noting that uh, uh, initially you, you as a party had already uh, supported the fight against graft. Well, I must reiterate that uh, even as we speak, uh, we as a party still support the war against corruption and impunity. It is something that we have been singing and saying uh, all this time. But uh, we have, uh, even in the statement that we issued yesterday, we made it clear that uh, we are not against the prosecution or that uh, indeed we still support the efforts by the DPP to end impunity in this country. Uh, what we uh, cautioned was that uh, in the historical context of a country and uh, where it is that we have come from, it, it is less than 11 months, uh, Thairu, when uh, we were embroiled in this dispute uh, regarding the presidential election. And there were certain pronouncements that uh, were made by the then Jubilee candidate, uh, uh, Uhuru Kenyatta, uh, that uh, once uh, the election matters were done with, that there would be a revisit of the judiciary because essentially they were very unhappy with uh, uh, the decision of the Supreme Court to annul the August state's elections. Now, many people will agree with me that uh, uh, DCJ will played a very uh, prominent role. I mean, this thing was uh, live on uh, all television stations and people saw uh, that uh, she demonstrated a very clear appreciation of the petitioner's case and the law and uh, she was uh, caught many times putting to task the lawyers that were doing the defense for the IEBC and even the, uh, the, the, the alleged winners at that particular point. So all we are saying is... Uh, in our view, uh, we should have gone about this matter by ensuring that even when we are prosecuting uh, DCJ Mwilu, we first delink her with the office of a judge of, uh, of the Supreme Court. Don't you think that this uh, whole scenario is now taking the political dimension, noting that uh, most of the lawyers who are now uh, uh, in defense of uh, the DCJ are from uh, the NASA and actually participated in the NASA presidential petition? First of all, I always protest this uh, moniker that attaches to lawyers, that these are NASA lawyers or these are ODM lawyers. First of all, uh, you must know that uh, before even your ordinary ODM member, they have a very strong sense of right and wrong, which is why many of these uh, top legal minds are also members of ODM. But that does not mean that they are ODM lawyers, as people like to call them, or NASA lawyers. These are the top legal minds in the country. And that uh, essentially when there is uh, a matter of great controversy, uh, you will always see the best brains uh, battling it out in the, in the courts. So I, uh, I don't want to ascribe any politics into the representation that the DCJ has chosen. You you will remember that uh, uh, the, the, the accused person or the client themselves are the ones who select the lawyers that they think would best represent their cases. And there is no denying that some of the lawyers who are also members of ODM are actually the best brains when it comes to the law in this country. So they should be available for every person, including those perceived to be uh, of, of a different political persuasion. Then this does not leave any, don't you think that uh, it leaves a room for those who are speculating that maybe the DCJ might be or might have been linked to to uh, some of the lawyers during that uh, presidential petition? First of all, that is absolute nonsense. But uh, we cannot stop speculation. I mean, uh, as a person, I cannot stand here and, and, and not say uh, people should not speculate. We can also not fault perception because perception is a very subjective thing. Uh, if it is viewed in that light, there is really nothing that we can do. But the truth of the matter is this. These are top legal brains that should be available to every person who would like to have legal representation. And in law, there is a rule called the cap rank rule, that if you are approached as a lawyer to represent somebody in court, you really do not have an option, unless there are compelling reasons, for you not to represent that person. If that person believes that you are the best representation that they can get in the circumstances, then you have a responsibility and a duty as a lawyer to give it your best. I'd also like to get your thoughts in regards to uh, the debate that has been going on since yesterday after the arrest of the DCJ that all this uh, surrounds uh, the succession politics of the uh, CJ, that is uh, David Maraga. 
Your thoughts on this? I really would not want to go into that at the moment. For us, we are looking at the propriety of the action that has been taken by the uh, uh, by the uh, DPP and asking ourselves if there was not a better way to go about it and achieve the same result in terms of uh, uh, advancing the war on corruption and, uh, and ending impunity in this country. I think that is where I would like to leave it. And don't, don't you think that uh, my last question will be this. Let me just throw the span into the works. Uh, maybe it happened when the, your party leader and the former prime minister is out of the country, uh, is in Germany. I don't think it is dependent on uh, the whereabouts of, uh, of the party leader or indeed even any other leader in this country because you should know that the war on corruption is not fought, is not being fought for and on behalf of Raila Odinga. It is being fought for and be on behalf of, of, of all Kenyans who are still supportive of this particular effort. So where he is really is not an issue, Chris. Thank Thanks a lot, Ban SG. Well, uh, that has been uh, the Secretary General of ODM uh, just giving us uh, his thoughts in regards to what has uh, transpired uh, since uh, yesterday. For us, uh, we'll continue uh, giving uh, these briefs uh, as they continue unfolding uh, from uh, the corridors of justice and, of course, uh, the politics surrounding all these arrests. Is back to your studio. Well, there you have it. Thank you so much, ODM Secretary General Sifuna, giving us his views and the party's views on the ongoing fight against graft in the country, which took an interesting twist, rather, um, when they went for Deputy Chief Justice Filomeno Mwilu. But let's look at what the law says about the Director of Public Prosecution's powers, and specifically in Article 157 of the Constitution, sub-Article 10, which says the Director of Public Prosecutions shall not require the consent of any person or authority for the commencement of criminal proceedings and in the exercise of his or her powers or functions shall not be under the direction or control of any person or authority. While Sabbatical 11 says in exercising the powers conferred by this article, the Director of Public Prosecutions shall have regard to the public interest, the interest of the administration of justice and the need to prevent and avoid abuse of the legal process. This was also highlighted in ODM's press statement that was released earlier on and we'll definitely dig deeper to actually ascertain is this just a political witch hunt or is there real facts being uncovered? Well, we now take a short break right here on News Desk. We'll be back with more information for you as we continue highlighting the latest developments happening at the judiciary. Do stay with us.